Hello students, a warm welcome. I hope you, you guys are doing extremely well. As I have told you in our last video that due to a nationwide lockdown situation, the Northeast Junior College Authority has stepped forward to start online classes. So that's why we have gone through a thorough discussion with all the teachers from the top level to the bottom level, the Northeast Junior College Authority then finally came up with a decision to start up the online classes and hence for by the direction of our MD sir we have started this online classes and I am Arnold Dr. Chaudhary from the Department of Economics dealing with the microeconomics part A of our economics syllabus. Well, in our last video we have talked about what is the meaning of economics, that is the household management and the four definitions of economics. Today we will go through some more concepts. So without any further ado, so let's get into it. Okay, after the meaning of economics and uh, the various definitions of economics given by various economists, we come to the two broad categories of economics or basically the two broad divisions of economics. So let's start into it. The economics world basically gets divided or broadly can be categorized into two big parts. One is microeconomics and another is macroeconomics. So I'll be dealing with basically the microeconomics. Then again, before going into details into microeconomics, let's first get the meaning of microeconomics and the macroeconomics. So we already know the meaning of the word economics, which is simply the household management, as we have already discussed in our last video. So for sake of simplicity, I'm just omitting this, this word. Economics. We already know the meaning of economics. This is household management. So the word micro got derived from a Greek word micros. M I K R O S. Micros. Which means small. So we can directly get the meaning that microeconomics is something which deals with very small small economic units and then likewise macroeconomics will come from a Greek word macros M-A-K-R-O-S macros this was small so this will be directly large the meaning of macros is means large so this simply indicates that macroeconomics deals with something big, something large, large concepts, economic concepts, and microeconomics deals with very small, small economic units or economic concepts, whatever you want to name it. So basically, the microeconomics is something that deals with. It deals with. individual individual economic individual economic units by individual economic units I want to mean that this deals with everything individually like for example an individual consumer an individual uh, farm, any farm, huh? say for example there is a Maggi company or there is a Kenbedi company or there is a uh, fan company, Bajaj, Usha or there is a uh, light company.
company sis cover or say for example any mobile company so if we deal with those things we will concentrate only one say for example there are various uh, mobile companies are there vivo samsung oppo so while dealing with microeconomics we will concentrate any one of these say for example we will deal with only vivo company so this will be covered as microeconomics so microeconomics is something that deals with individual economic units like individual farm individual farm then individual uh, household individual household by i want to mean only single household this household means a family actually so this could be my family or this could be your family or any other but while dealing with in microeconomics we will concentrate only one only one family or only one farm or only one product individual product individual product say for example only uh, the cadbury dairy milk production or cadbury dairy milk uh, supply this kind of thing then it comes individual demand individual demand well we have already know that human wants are unlimited these are coming from our first year syllabus is human wants are unlimited and we individuals have demand for so many things but while dealing with the demand in microeconomics we will concentrate only a individual demand maybe this could be only my demand or this could be only your demand but i will concentrate only one single person and only one single person that of only one single commodity one single person and one single commodity everything one 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 no we will never concentrate into two things everything will be dealing with small form okay i am uh, i'm very sorry that uh, we will not concentrate into two things we sometimes may take into consideration of two things that we will discuss in later period but for sake of simplicity just try to understand the simple fact that in microeconomics whatever we will be dealing with will be everything small and individual economic units like individual farm individual household individual product individual demand or individual supply etc 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 so on and so forth so this is the simple concept of Micro economics, which got derived from a Greek word micros, which means small. Now let's switch our discussion to macroeconomics. So macroeconomics that got derived from a Greek word macros, which simply means large. Hence, the macroeconomics. it deals with large economic aggregates by large economic aggregates we want to mean that uh basically we have seen a dialogue in our tv so so small small milate jao large banate jao so that kind of vibe is going on here so all those micro concepts if we club them together the small individual units so for example there are so many farms in the market so many farms so many farms and if we club them together and we study them then and then it will be come into the under the macroeconomics curriculum or macroeconomics domain whatever you want to name it so simply macroeconomics deals with large economic aggregates like aggregate demand aggregate demand we in microeconomics if we little uh, swipe back 
to the video we will get to that in microeconomics we had individual demand but here in macroeconomics we are getting aggregate demand similarly in microeconomics we had individual supply but here it will be aggregate supply the sum total of all the supplies and aggregate demand means the sum total of all the demands in microeconomics we will be dealing with individual income income of a single individual but here in macroeconomy if we club the demand or sorry if we club the income of all the individuals all the individuals from where all the individuals from the economy if we club all the incomes from uh, various persons in the economy then we will get a national income in Microeconomics we will be dealing with individual income but here it will be called as a national income. National income. So students this is the simple and a very lucid concept of macroeconomics that macroeconomics came from a Greek word which is macros this simply means large and macroeconomics simply deals with large economic aggregates like aggregate demand aggregate supply national income and so on and so forth now students I want to mention that this macroeconomics and macroeconomics these two terms i'm writing it on the board the terms you can note it down also the terms micro economics the term microeconomics and macroeconomics were coined by were first coined by were first coined by Ragnar Frisch Ragnar Frisch. So these two terms, microeconomics and macroeconomics, were first coined by Professor Ragnar Frisch, or simply you can say Ragnar Frisch, in 1933. So students, just take a uh, step back, and if we go to the previous video also, I mean the first video, you will see everything coming into a chronological order. The first definition came in 1776, the Smith's definition, Adam Smith definition, then the 1890 definition given by Professor Marshall, then the 1932 definition, the scarcity definition given by Mm, Lyle and Robbins and see 1932 after just exactly after one year in 1933 Professor Ragnar Frisch has coined these two terms microeconomics and macroeconomics so this is basically a simple uh, concept that how economics is evolving day by day and day by day, by day. starting from very old era 1776 and before that we have Rajas, Maharajas, and my dear students, I would, I would like to say that we already knew before 1776 also there was already economics. We have in our uh, 10 or 9 or 8 standards, we have came across a one single term that is known as barter economics, where goods were exchanged for goods. At that time also, economics was there, but nobody knew that this thing is called economics. In 1776, Professor uh, Smith, Adam Smith, has first introduced the concept, formally introduced the concept 
economics in the name of political economy. Then, starting from his time period, day by day, day by day, day by day, the economics got a more and more and concrete change. And finally, in 1933, we got segregated into two big parts microeconomics and macroeconomics. So now let's directly dive into the microeconomics or basically I should say the scope of microeconomics. Scope of microeconomics. The scope of microeconomics is not a very big concept or it's not a something to be get frightened of. It simply means that what are the things that are dealt under microeconomics. The scope of microeconomics simply tells us what are the things, what are the things that are dealt under dealt under microeconomics this is the simple meaning of scope of microeconomics it simply tells us what are the things that are dealt under microeconomics so let's jump into it In microeconomic scope, basically we have three broad scopes. One is product pricing, another is product pricing, product pricing. By product pricing, we can easily get the meaning what would be it. Product pricing means how we set up the price of any product. Say for example, this marker pen, or this marker pen, or the mobile, or this whiteboard. How we set up the price. So this will be discussed under product pricing. Then after product pricing, we come into factor pricing. To make any product, we need factors like factors of production and we already know there are four factors of production land, labor, capital and entrepreneurship or the organizer or the organization whatever you want to call it so and everything has a price the labor has a price and that price is called wage then uh, the land has a price that price is called rent the capital has a price that price is called intervals and finally, the entrepreneur, which also gets a remuneration or he has a price too, that price is called as profit. This profit is income or the remuneration paid to the uh, entrepreneur, wage is a remuneration or income or we can say it is the price also for the labor and um, interest is a price paid to the capital, which is also can be said as a remuneration paid to the capital. So students, there are two broad scopes and again there is another one which deals with welfare economics. Welfare economics. So in product pricing, we basically deal with how to Pricing, how to price the product and that is uh, decided by the forces of demand and supply. Demand and supply. The demand and supply simply means individual demand and individual supply. The demand coming from an individual consumer and which is individual things comes under microeconomics. See, everything is getting related. 
individual demand and supply comes from the producer side or the seller side the individual supply so individual demand and individual supply by making an interaction and thereby we set up the price of the product with the forces of demand and supply likewise in factor pricing also we take into the concept of demand and supply because this demand and supply but not related to any product the demand for a product and supply for a product which are discussed under product pricing will take the same ideology but here demand will be demand for a factor demand for a factor and supply for a factor so again with the help of the forces of demand and supply we will set up the price of a factor what is the demand for a factor that could be any factor see here i am writing a factor i am not writing multiple factors only a a means single and in microeconomics i am telling you again and again my dear students to get your concept that that in microeconomics we deal with every small unit individual unit single single unit so in demand also will take consideration of only one single demand one single demand for what one single demand for a factor is factor pricing so we will concentrate on demand for a factor and again the supply for a factor not multiple factors a factor and factor means the factors of production there are four factors of production you can note it down there are four factors of production which are land labor capital and organization in product pricing we will concentrate demand for a product and supply for a product in factor pricing we will concentrate demand for a factor and supply for a factor finally in the welfare economics let me before starting this welfare economics let me get a little back a little back to our last video last video i by the last video i want to highlight the definition given by the lionel robbins that resources have alternative uses so from that concept from that ideology we have come into this welfare economics so as resources have alternative uses then students a directly question comes that whether resources were being allocated optimally or not whether they are allocated in best suitable way or not whether they are very good or not so all these things are discussed under welfare economy that whether resources are optimally used or not whether we are utilizing the resources at its best level or not or if there is any wastage if there is any wastage this won't be called as welfare and if we utilize the resources optimally if we resources use the resources optimally definitely our well-being will increase because we can have more of everything whatever more of that basically more of everything basically uh, into more of that thing into which we will put our resources resources are alternative uses so there are so many uses we can come up come up with of any resource say for example a wood a wood can be turned into a desk or a bench or a chair or a table or there are so many things that can be a wood into turn into a guitar that is also made of wood a harmonium also made of made of wood so there are so many alternatives which one to choose so that thing and how to choose that everything will be discussed under welfare economics so these are the three broad scope of micro economics product pricing factor pricing and the welfare economics how students 
let me go through the last topic for this video i'll be discussing the positive economics and the normative economics positive economics and normative economics well students before starting i want to mention that do not ever think that positive and normative economics is something yes no that positive simply means all the positive things and normative already simply means the negative things like yes and the no kind of thing this is not the thing actually the positive economics basically deals with what is it deals with the question what is it deals with the question what is like for example i want to mean that let me give you an example you get it like uh, what is the gdp gross domestic product what is the rate of employment what is the rate of inflation so positive economics is something that deals with what is it deals with it deals with what is like what is the gdp what is the rate of inflation what is the rate of unemployment these are the things or so on and so forth these are the things which will be coming under the domain of positive economics and in normative economics we deal with what should be it deals with what should be what should be like what should be the gdp here it was what is gdp here it will be what should be the gdp here it will be what should be the rate of unemployment again what should be the rate of inflation positive economics that deals with what is and normative economics deals with what should be so my dear students by this question what is the gdp or what is the rate of unemployment this will give a actual picture like what is the gdp uh, we can say that the current gdp uh, that could be anything 4.5 trillion 4.5 million or so on and so forth what is the rate of un uh, employment maybe 10% or 12% that could be anything what is the rate of inflation 7% 5.6% that could be anything so what is this positive economics this what is part it is giving us the actual picture actual picture of any economic concept so basically it deals with it deals with actual it deals with actual and the should be part it deals with the ideal what is the best one what is the ideal one so that is discussed under normative economics it deals with idea for example let me show you how it deals with ideas like uh, a 
the rate of inflation I'm just writing RI rate of inflation say suppose I would say what is the rate of inflation just listen carefully the question what is what is the rate of inflation what is coming under positive economy so maybe we have come across with answer that the rate of inflation is 7% the rate of inflation is 7% at the same time we are asking what should be the rate of inflation maybe we have came across by analyzing that we have came across that rate of inflation should be 3% so students we can easily get the current rate of inflation which is 7% it is very high but the ideal rate of inflation should be 3% so which one is the good situation whether the current situation is good or the ideal situation was the good obviously the ideal situation the 3% it is a good situation and this current situation the what is situation which is dealing under the positive economy for this part it is bad situation but what if this should be thing was 10% if it was 10 percent then it would, would have been a good situation if and only the should be part was 10 percent then and then we could have said that current situation is a good situation otherwise it would have been a bad situation so my dear students only by asking the should be question only by asking that should be question we are coming to know that whether the situation is good or bad so that answer is given by the normative economics the should be part that means i simply want to mean that normative economics gives us a value judgment that whether the things are good or bad it gives us value judgment it gives us value judgment but positive economics it does not gives us any value judgment my dear students it does not it doesn't gives us any value judgment gives us any value judgment so my dear students i am again repeating this the positive economics and the normative economics positive economics something deals with what is and normative economics deals with what should be positive economics deals with the actual that what is what is actually going on right now right here right at this moment this thing is discussed under positive economics and normative economics gives us the best picture what should be what it ought to be what it required to be so this question is answered by the normative economics what should be so it deals with ideal and by asking this normative economics question what should be we came across the value judgment thing whether the current situation is good or bad we can only answer that by asking the what should be question so normative economics that gives us value judgment but Positive economics does not give us value judgment. So my dear students, this is all for this video. I hope you will like this video and you will find this video is very informative. We will continue in our 
next video something i will come up with something more something very interesting some more concepts of economics and my dear sir i would like to say tell that we are already in the introduction chapter this chapter is not over yet we are continuing this chapter in the next video i will come across with some more concepts and we will have a lot of fun with that i would like to end up the today's video and i want to say you that please stay indoors please stay safe do not go out do not come into contact of any unknown persons please wash your hands carefully and do not go out